Okay, so now it's time to get ready to actually record some scratching. So we'll do a few things. One is we'll uh, tidy up this workspace a little bit. So uh, we can close the envelope controller because we don't need that anymore. Um, we can get rid of this sampler channel that just happened to be in my blank template. Um, now the envelope controller here, I'm going to rename that to fader, just so I know what that is. Uh, when you're recording, you have to make sure that this is what has focus, um, otherwise you won't be able to enable the fader from, from your keyboard. Um, okay, And we'll have to leave the formula controller open so that uh, we can we can control the um, the tempo of the song. So uh, so that we have something to scratch to, I'm just going to um, put in a, a sliced beat uh, into pattern one. So if I go down and uh, find a beat, I think we'll go with this one. So I'm going to add that to a new slicer channel. Make sure that's eight bits. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to put down <coughs> four bars of that, and I'll name that pattern uh, breakbeat. Okay. And then, as for the actual scratcher data, we'll put that into pattern two, and we'll name this pattern scratcher. Okay. So again, we'll make sure we have focus on the fader, and then we can uh, just leave that in the background for the moment. Um, <clears throat> now, the last few things is I'll turn on the metronome. Uh, I find it helps to be able to hear that while I'm scratching. It's easy to lose the beat when you're uh, pushing the record back and forth. Um, the next thing is uh, because we're going to be we want to be able to scratch and record the scratch over the full four bars. We'll set the playback and record mode to song rather than pattern, like that. Um, and okay, we're just about ready to go. So uh, I'm uh, when I scratch in FL Studio, uh, I uh, I run FL Studio on my tablet PC, so I'm using a, a Wacom tablet uh, to move the record back and forth. I find it easier to use than a mouse. Um, Spiro's, again, uh, pretty good at using a mouse, but um, it just wasn't for me. So, <clears throat> uh, I'll set the tempo down to half speed. I'll just play that to make sure that's working. Okay. Now, You'll see uh, when I set this up to record in in that little uh, four bar four beat intro, um, I find I have to sort of kickstart the scratcher into uh, into action. So I'll hit uh, I'll hit play and then I'll scrub a bit in the in the waveform to start it playing and then I'll quickly cue it up to the start of the sample. So. Uh, without further ado, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to quickly scrub this to the start of it, and we're ready. So that was a pretty rough scratch, but uh, it'll do. So you can see that now we have data across here in the scratcher pattern. Uh, we've got fader data here as standard piano roll data. <coughs> and if we set the tempo back up to regular speed and play, and I'll turn off the metronome because that's a bit loud, um, so you yeah, have the sounds. I'll turn off record mode as well. So here we go. OK, 
Okay, so a bit rough and ready, but uh, it's it's worked. So if we wanted to edit that performance again, because this is all ultimately uh, MIDI data, automation data, it can all be tweaked after the fact. So if I was uh, off with my timing in terms of the fader, you just edit that as you would any piano roll data. So if I click on the piano roll here, so you can see right here at the start, for example, it looks like I've I've clicked the fader a little bit too early here. So I might just tidy that up by pulling that onto the beat and shortening it. So now that's that should be correct. Um, I could potentially run a quantize on this, but um, I've found a, a lot of the fading, the, a lot of the scratcher sounds tend to be actually uh, opening and shutting the fader slightly before and after the beat. Um, but again, that you you can play around with that later. Uh, the other major bit of uh, data which you'd be manipulating is the wave position is where uh, wh where you were scratching the record back and forth. So I found the easiest way to open that is from the browser. Uh, let me just close all that up. If you go up the top to uh, current project, then automation, and then scratcher for the scratcher pattern, and then in here is the data. So there's the, the, the piano roll data for the fader that we just looked at. And here are the four channels that have been recorded for the scratcher. And the main one that you'll be looking at is this last one, which is wave position. So if we open that up, uh, and that's our data. So I might just zoom in, zoom in a bit on this. And there it is there. So if, <clears throat> say, for example, you thought that um, this, this part wasn't right, you can simply just go in and correct it and just draw in a new shape. Or if things, or if you want to cancel movement or make it faster or slower, you can edit it quite easily in this view. Uh, and that's the basics of, of recording a scratch performance in FL Studio.